Welcome to the Interzone Roadmap Pit Stop June 2021 edition. This is a bonus monthly show that answers that burning question in your mind. What's rolling out now for SharePoint and related technology in Microsoft 365? I'm Mark Cashman, Senior Product Manager on the Microsoft 365 Marketing Team, here to help to set the ongoing record straight. This month, I talk with R.K. Menon, one of our lead program managers focused on the admin experience in the SharePoint Admin Center, which includes alignment with the overall Microsoft 365 admin experience across apps and services. We'll dig into three important SharePoint Admin Center updates, all with the goal to provide better insights and visibility into what is happening across sites, storage, sharing, sync, and a whole lot more. It's great to hear direct from our PMs behind the tech. Beyond the breadth of admin innovations, we'll focus on what landed this month, a few related items, and the always fun teasers looking into next month. This podcast is 30 minutes, time to kick back, get informed, the goal being to stay ahead of the ever-curving Microsoft 365 roadmap. And you might come away singing a yo-ho-ho tune in your ear. More on that later. Okay, it's time to manage and control our way into all the tech that rolled out in June 2021. We start with employee engagement, that one-to-many broadcast of all things that you want to say, be it content, news, information, and of course, dialogue, that two-way engagement. We start off with SharePoint Auto News Digest updates. We're adding some new features to enhance the experience overall. You'll have the ability to brand your news digest with your organization's theme colors and logo. If your organization's site is already branded, that branding will automatically applied be applied to automatic news digests. There's also some new built-in intelligent rankings so that users see the news that's most relevant to them. The News Digest is sent on a weekly basis, showcasing only published news posts. If there are no news posts that are relevant for the user, there will be no email sent to that user. If users want to opt out of receiving Automatic Digest, they can click the unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email. A lot more information on how to get set up, both from the end user experience and ways that you can control how and who these get sent to using some new PowerShell commands. Next, we'll focus on a few updates to the SharePoint Admin Center. There are some new columns on the Active uh, Sites page. In the SharePoint Admin Center, the Active Sites page will provide new information about where a site gets created from, indicating the different apps and services where you might create a site from. And there's a new Teams column that shows you whether a site is connected to Microsoft Teams or not. The Created From and Teams information will also be available in the Details pane when you select an individual site. Both of these new columns help narrow down troubleshooting and highlight actions admins might prescribe to their own customer base. Next, the SharePoint Admin Center, the main homepage you land on, is getting an Insights dashboard. This provides administration at a glance. These are actionable charts and insights that you'll see as cards, and it's customizable. You can add, remove, and rearrange cards to suit your needs. As a SharePoint or global admin, you can choose to see and use new cards such as SharePoint storage usage, site usage, file activity, OneDrive usage, OneDrive file activity specific, search active sites. You'll see if you have applied sensitivity labels and there are term store operations. You can also add relevant cards from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center to bring in service health information, message center information, and Microsoft 365 active user report. Last, you'll find a recommendations tailored to each organization to guide you to learn more about improvements that you may not know about that will help you better manage and control your SharePoint environment in Microsoft 365 without requiring deep analysis or clicking into too many places to get the same information. More on this, plus the design and a lot of the technology behind, we'll continue this conversation with RK in just a moment. Last item in employee engagement is a reminder. We want to remind you to prepare your SharePoint and OneDrive environment for the end of support for Internet Explorer 11. Microsoft 365 apps and services will no longer support Internet Explorer 11 after August 17th, 2021. 
This means SharePoint and OneDrive will not be supported on IE11, and after this date, customers will have a degraded experience or will be unable to connect to Microsoft 365 apps and services. While we know this change might be difficult for some, we believe that they will get the most out of Microsoft 365 apps when using the Microsoft Edge browser. Microsoft 365 users will be well served with this change through faster and more responsive web access to greater sets of features in everyday tool sets. A lot more information on how to learn to prepare for IE11 support going away with additional information to help answer a lot of questions. And with that, let us lead into a wonderful conversation with R.K. Menon from the SharePoint Admin Center team. It is now that time where we get to hear the behind the behind the scenes. This is really the behind the scenes because we're talking about admin features and without admins and without admin features, there would be no SharePoint if you asked me. So we have time right now to talk to RK Menon, who is our program manager focused on the SharePoint Admin Center. And there's a lot going on to update some things and give you some new capabilities. And so I want to welcome to the show RK. Thanks, Mark. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm part of the team that builds and maintains the SharePoint and OneDrive administration experiences, ranging from the admin center portal you see on, on the web, all the way to the commands on PowerShell. Uh, most recently, our team has been working on a few new features that I'm super excited to talk about today. And these features have all rolled out worldwide and should be available to all of your tenants. And that is what our audience loves. They love to hear about it. We disclosed this a number of months ago, but now that it's rolling out, they'll actually get to hear you explain it and then hopefully go try it themselves. So if you think about this month's release, this, this month's, I should say, a set of releases, can we first talk about the strategy that you and the team have been on to consolidate the admin center, to align with other admin centers, and anything else you can add that just gives a sense of what is our strategy with the SharePoint admin center? That's a great question, Mark. Um, so Microsoft 365 administration is changing, and there has been a huge shift in our user base moving towards more generalist admins from the earlier specialist admins. And to empower all of our users, we are on a mission to enhance administration experience, making it super easy for admins to go about their day-to-day -day jobs. Now, this involves a few different pillars of our investments that form the overall strategy. Number one, we want to provide admins with actionable insights at a glance to maintain a healthy intranet. Number two, we want to bring together coherent experiences across all the admin centers to reduce the learning curve and make it easier for admins to go about their job. Uh, number three, we're on a constant path of building new features or new information into the admin center to enable our admins to really do something with that information or those features. And number four, while we build these features, we're also focused on improving the overall reliability and performance of our scenarios. And we want to make sure that our admins are efficient at their task as well and not just you know, being empowered to do it at a high level. And lastly, we want to allow more granular admin roles in the M365 ecosystem. And most recently, we've enabled the global reader role, allowing read-only access to the SharePoint Admin Center. So if I think about the way you described it initially, there's this notion of being able to designate somebody as the SharePoint admin, but at the same time, knowing that there are a number of people and, and customers out there that have some people that wear multiple hats. So there's that unity of design. If you think about a lot of things, when I think of admin capabilities, I think sometimes they start with PowerShell and then they graduate. And if that means they graduate into the admin UI, how do you explain or, or propose the way that we want to design that experience so that it's easy, it's consistent, and, and as people may be a singular SharePoint admin or they may be wear multiple hats, what can they expect from the that admin design? Uh, that's a great question, Mark. I think there are three primary principles that guide the experience. Number one, we're pushing for a visual and a GUI based interaction so that even if there are users who are not used to PowerShell and do not understand you know, all the small nuances of commands uh, to, to manage their admin center, they can come to the web portal and see a very simple visual way of managing the settings and sites across the admin center. Uh, and for example, we are rolling out a new insights dashboard that provides all the information that an admin needs at a glance to ensure that their internet is set up healthy. Similarly, we're building UI features for tasks that previously were only possible from the PowerShell, such as the ability to replace the root site. 
And while we build these features, we try to keep uh, the features as coherent as possible across different admin centers so that, you know, users don't have to go through a different learning curve for each and every admin center. And that directly correlates to what you were saying, where you have users wearing multiple hats. Uh, if they come to the Teams admin center or the Microsoft admin center or the SharePoint admin center, having a similar experience with all the knobs and controls will go a long way in making their job a lot easier. Now, as an example, the new dashboard that I was talking to you about we, that we built on the SharePoint Admin Center is extremely similar to the one that's already available in the Microsoft Admin Center. And cards that are there, you can actually reuse the same cards across the different admin centers. Now, that is the dashboard. But other examples of where we're building uh, you know, coherent experiences, if you look at the settings page on the SharePoint Admin Center, that is built on a list-based UI, which is the same UI that's used to build the active users list in the Microsoft Admin Center. So this way, we're bringing together a similar experience across multiple admin centers and making it as easy as possible, be it for admins who are well-versed with SharePoint and PowerShell to quickly uh, make changes from the UI, or for net new admins who may not be aware of, of PowerShell and all the nitty-gritties, they can come and just look at these settings on screen and make quick changes. Now, while we build these features, we do want to make sure that all our features delight all of our admins. And therefore, we proudly build features with accessibility in mind. So one of the things that you mentioned, I, I have to admit, because the other part of my job is focused on Microsoft lists and knowing that the SharePoint Admin Center, you as uh, you know somebody that leverages that list platform was able to do essentially that, a unique solution direct for admins, of course, at scale for the world. If I think about the SharePoint farm that is our service, that's a massive undertaking. And to build a lot of the core experiences, especially the sites list or the sites page, to build that onto lists unique to what you need to do as an admin, Admin, I think really is a testament to both lists and the the what you're able to accomplish. The one thing I want to touch on before we talk about the actual features is you mentioned the admin center for everybody. And what I think is that breadth between people who are comfortable using PowerShell and may continue to use it, even if there's a UI for X or Y task. But what I also think is it's the reality of the cloud. It's our, our service is meant for not your legacy IT pros. We, we brought them forward and we're, we always learn a lot from them. But it also sounds to me that a lot more people who maybe aren't deep IT pros are able to manage SharePoint and do it without PowerShell. Again, a, a testament, I think, to both the approach and for me, I don't represent IT at all. And I'm able to accomplish a lot when I do demos for the admin center. So my hat's to you. If you wouldn't mind, I think there's the, the two areas that I wanted to dive into, which is you've mentioned the dashboard a couple of times, and maybe you can describe one or two of the cards and what each of those, you know, by design you can accomplish. You see a card and then what do you do? Definitely, Mark. I think uh, the dashboard is one of our biggest releases that we've done in the recent past. At a, at a high level, the dashboard is aimed at giving visual insights to admins and giving them the ability to take uh, direct action right from the dashboard. Uh, to give you an example, I can talk about uh, three different scenarios which I, which I feel will probably be most relevant. Number one, let's talk about the storage card. Now, in the past, admins had a way of looking at their storage either in the widget that was on the top of the screen in the Apple Sites page, or if they go to the Microsoft Admin Center usage reports and download the Excel sheet and go through it. And what we've done is we've taken the same amount of data and put it into a visual card, which tells you what is your total percentage of storage used as a heading. And below that, we show you a trend of usage in the last six months. Not only do we give you that data, we do a little bit of forecasting as well. And we try to tell you how likely you are to run out of storage in the next three to nine months. And if we feel that you are at, uh, at a higher risk of running out of storage soon, we surface another button that gives you an option to immediately go and buy more storage, or we give you a button to directly go to the active sites list, which is sorted on the, on the sites that use more storage. Therefore, from this one card, if you feel your tenant is using more storage than you should, you can either see the sites that uh, take up more storage to clean up some space, or you can directly go and buy more storage as well. That's the first card. The second card, which, uh, which we believe is actually a very simple card, but a very powerful one, is the ability to search for sites right from the landing page. Most of our admins, their job or one of their primary tasks is, is acting on a help desk ticket. And that ticket involves making some change to a particular site. And our admins, their usual process is they go to the admin center, load the active sites page, click on the search box, type in the URL or, the, or whatever information they have to find the site they're looking for. 
with this new card, admins can perform the search right from the landing page. They don't have to wait for the active sites page to load and then do the search. So imagine, just uh, open your uh, SharePoint Admin Center, the card is right there on your screen, put in the search query, hit enter, and immediately you're taken to the results of the search, which makes it super easy and much faster for our admins to access the site that they need. Now, these are cards. Apart from cards, I do want to talk about another feature that we're building into the dashboard, and those are recommendations. Whenever we feel that there is a setting or an action that an admin can take to improve the, the, the health of their internet, we now surface this information as a recommendation on the top of the screen. For example, uh, the root site of SharePoint is a very important site for the overall internet. And if the SharePoint uh, root site is not a modern site, we recommend that you set, it, uh, set a modern communication site as a root site. So for admins who have a classic site as a root site, we will surface this recommendation on top of the screen with a one-click way into replacing the root site with a new uh, with a new modern site. So I believe these are three examples where uh, the dashboard is not only going to give you a top-level insight into the health of your tenant, but also give you a one-click action to take action and make sure that your tenant is as healthy as possible. You had mentioned earlier the notion of aligning with a lot of the principles of what you see in the other admin centers. And one that rings true to me based on what you were just talking about from a recommendations perspective is if you go into the Microsoft 365 admin center and in the security and compliance center, it knows what features are turned on or off and it knows the health of the service basically for each tenant. And it's that same recommendations notion to be able to know, we know your current state and we have a lot of learnings, analysis and research to tell you what might be the next good thing to do or based on what it is you're trying to accomplish. So I do see the alignment and, and I know that from the security and compliance center, there are those same recommendations to get people into a good, better, healthy state based on what we know. The other thing I wanted to know, you mentioned the list platform that you're leveraging for the sites and, and other aspects of the admin center. And I know there are two new columns for the site list effectively for admins to have greater awareness of what is about these sites that they should know. Can you talk about the two new list columns that are unique to the admin center? Definitely. I think uh, these two new columns are going to be super important. Now, we know SharePoint is evolving and it is now becoming the building block that powers other experiences such as Teams. And with more and more workloads being powered by SharePoint sites, it can get difficult for admins to manage their entire internet. With these two new columns that you spoke about, which is the site created from and the Microsoft Teams connected status, admins can now see which workload created a SharePoint site and can also see what sites are connected to Microsoft Teams. Now, with these two fields together, it provides a very powerful way for admins to estimate what the purpose behind a site being created was. For instance, if I see a site that has hardly any activity but is using a lot of storage, but if I see that it is created from Teams and is connected to Teams, the, there could be a good hypothesis that this site is powering a Teams which is actually active, a Teams team which is active, even though the actual SharePoint site might not be active. And uh, we've seen this case, is a, in this case a lot of times where admins want to delete a site, but they're not sure what this site is for, and therefore they're not sure if they can go ahead and delete it. With these two, two fields, which are available as a column, also available in the site info panel, uh, it's very easy for an admin to understand where what the site was created for. Yeah, I can imagine that, that that's not only the insights, but it actually gives them tools to be able to troubleshoot. And it may be on an individual site basis, but it also might be, you know, at the scale of a number of things meet a certain criteria and they can filter down and, and navigate to what they're trying to accomplish. So I think for admins, this is going to be a big, um, a big asset to be able to troubleshoot. If you could, through your crystal ball, because you do the planning and the rest of your team obviously is weighing in, um, without disclosing anything, can you share any concepts around what's coming next uh, or what you uh, and your team are, are thinking about based on feedback we're hearing consistently? Of course. But before I talk about that, I do want to talk about a few features that are coming up. And uh, one of the premium features that we want to talk about is the Microsoft 365 Information Barriers, which is a premium feature for regulated verticals like uh, finance, government, and education. It allows compliance administrators to segment their users based on compliance needs and associate content to specific segments. 
This ensures that access is granted only if segments match, regardless of other permissions. Globally available is a segment management experience in the SharePoint Admin Center, making the configuration and management of information barrier segments on SharePoint easy and admin friendly. Through this experience, SharePoint admins can add, remove, and update segments for SharePoint sites. Similarly, as organizations dig digitally transforms and expands globally, digital content grows exponentially and so does the external sharing of sensitive data. Admins can now use data access governance reports in the SharePoint Admin Center to monitor the external sharing activities and policy settings for the sites that matter the most. Now, these insights can allow admins to validate the top sites, the sites with the greatest number of sensitive documents, or with the most content shared using any one links, and have access policies that are appropriate for your security posture and tailor the policies as needed. Now, this feature is currently in preview. Do look forward uh, to the release communication. That aside, we are, as we mentioned earlier, on a journey to align the SharePoint Admin Center more closely with the rest of the M365 suite as it moves to be more interconnected and tuned to accommodate the changing needs or the changing collaboration needs of users. Now we're planning to build on what we started this year and bring you much, much more, ranging from improvements in overall performance and reliability of our service to enhancing and building new tools to make you even more efficient in the midst of growing scale. As you mentioned earlier, Mark, all that we build is based on community feedback and uh, the feedback we've received has played, uh, played a vital role throughout this journey. We read all the feedback that we get and it does help us prioritize and shape the admin center. We enjoy uh, both the strong feedback on stuff that we should fix and the positive feedback on, on things that are working well. I would request that our admins keep sending feedback by clicking on the feedback button in the admin portal. Yeah, that is a great way to not only provide feedback, but also to basically let the team know what you're doing and what might help you do your job better. Um, or certainly if things aren't working uh, as you expect, then then to let us know. But, you know, it's funny, you you mentioned information barriers, and I had a quick image of watching your peer, Seshamani, on stage announcing it for the first time. And I will be transparent. For me, it was, uh, it took me a little bit to understand exactly what the feature was. But now knowing in the ways that people can manage content at a way that is actually proactively more protecting their content, and knowing the role that you and your team play to implement that so that it's possible. Uh, kudos, obviously, to getting the feature out, but I think it's going to be a big win for how people uh, manage their content even more closely. Indeed, it's one of those key features that uh, we hope will make our admins life a lot easier. I hope so too. RK, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, it's great to hear everything that you've been working on. I know we're still just in the midst of rolling a number of things out, a lot more to come. And certainly over the last few years, if anybody's gone into the SharePoint Admin Center, I think they'll see that it's much more organized, a lot more actionable, and now a lot more insightful. I think the dashboard is, is going to be a real big, uh, not only hit in terms of how we view it, we think it's going to get a lot of use, but I also think it's going to give our admins what they've been asking for. For. So kudos to you and the team for getting to this milestone and thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Mark. Always a pleasure. It's always great to hear from our PMs to know what it is that they do to listen and plan and design for what it is your experience will be. And specific to admins, I hope you got a lot of insight into what RK and team have done and continuously will do for you into the future. Now, we all know to err is human. But to R is pirate me hearties. A vast ye before we cover this month's teamwork prize. I want to share a new, unique audio asset that crested and sailed my way, shared by Captain Jason Moore. We know them OneDrive pirates prefer to communicate eye to eye, but let's lend an ear, walk the plank with me, and enjoy the OneDrive Sea Shanty Song, written by our very own Sea Rover, Adam Horowitz, produced by the OneDrive team. Have ye a listen. There once was a file shared with me, a good slide deck for all to see. 250 megs, it was so large, load, PowerPoint load. <gasps> oh, sink it down, one drives where your content's found. One day when the sinking's done, we'll take our files and go. 
There once was a file shared with me, very secure used DLP. I worked so hard with my good friends, but not with any foes. <gasps> oh, oh, sink it down, one drives where your content's found. One day when the sinking's done, we'll take our files and go. There once was a file shared with me, I have so many, don't you see? How could I ever find them all, that's what at one drives for. <coughs> Oh, sink it down, one drives where your content's found One day when the sinking's done, we'll take our files and go Again, boy! Oh, sink it down, one drives where your content's found One day when the sinking's done, we'll take our files and go Army matey. Now that you're filled with OneDrive treasure, you're ready to batten down the hatches and move on? Shiver me timbers, weigh the anchor, and yo ho ho, here be teamwork tech from June 2021. First up in teamwork, Microsoft Lists is getting the at mentions in comments capability. Mention people you work with while adding a new comment to a list item. As a result, that person will receive an email notification with a direct link to the list item itself. It's a great way to notify, share, and collaborate directly from within the list itself. Next up for teamwork, Power Apps can now display images from Microsoft Lists. This is an improved experience so that images stored in image columns in Lists can be displayed when designing custom forms in Power Apps when you're in the Design Canvas. You can choose to display images in four sizes, small, medium, large, or full. The main result being is you can result those images into the form and they display really nicely and the fact that you can do it at all. So a lot of great innovation continuing between lists and power apps. The last for teamwork, now you can delete a page from within the page details. This is truly as simple as it sounds and one that's met with a lot of joy from what I've seen, mainly due to the time to click ratio performing this action. Instead of going several clicks in beyond the site contents page and into the pages library, now you can click the page details button at the top of the page or news article and delete in one click from within the page details pane. You know what they say, one less click pays it forward on the time clock or some other time-saving metaphor like that. It is now time to go beyond into related tech, 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 tech. First up, Headspace mindfulness content is now coming to Microsoft Viva Insights. You'll start to see a curated set of guided meditations and focus music from Headspace. The goal is to help disconnect from work in the evening, relax your mind before a big meeting, or find focus before starting an important project. In just a few minutes a day, meditation and mindfulness with Headspace can help users lower stress, increase focus, and ease teamwork. And in fact, before recording this episode, I listened to and followed the three-minute focus exercise. And it's up to you to decide if I sound more focused, but I can tell you it was easy to jump into and the benefits do exist. Headspace integration with Viva Insights is rolling out as a default on and, unless disabled by admins, the curated set of Headspace mindfulness content will be available to any user with the Viva Insights app installed. A lot to learn more, including, if you'd like, for admins to be able to disable this uh, so that it does not appear in Insights. Next up, create trackable tasks from your ad hoc Teams messages. Tasks happen everywhere, in an email thread, working on files, or when you're within a Teams chat. And before you forget to make a note of a task, simply click in and create tasks from within Microsoft Teams messages on desktop and web, like you've seen before with emails in Outlook or comments in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents. Note this update is natively built into the Teams experience, which means it no longer requires custom work with Power Automate. It's a really great intuitive experience right where you're having a conversation, create a task out of it. 
Last item for related tech, Microsoft Whiteboard is getting some updates within the Microsoft Teams experience to support hybrid work. The new Whiteboard is now integrated into more areas across Microsoft 365 to fit into your existing workflows. Whiteboard is now available in Teams channels and chats. Start a collaborative Whiteboard for everyone in the meeting with just one click. You can also pre-prep or reuse Whiteboards across multiple Teams meetings. There's lots of updates to the UI, improved real-time collaboration to make it easier to follow along with what others are doing, new interactive content with sticky notes, fluid components, and you can insert images and documents via a new sharing control that makes it connected to OneDrive. There's a lot more, so ink your ideas together during your next team meeting. Now, if you can hear, I'm rubbing my hands, and maybe if I had a goatee, I'd be twiddling my villain goatee so that you can close your eyes and visualize the near future. Yes. Here's two teasers for what's coming in July 2021. Teaser number one, Microsoft Lists. Take your lists offline plus performance improvements. This is Project Nucleus coming to fruition, the combination of progressive web app use plus enhancements to the OneDrive sync tech. More on that next month. Teaser number two, change a SharePoint page URL. Similar to the ability to delete a page or news item, you'll be able to do this. Change the URL directly from within the page details pane. That's it with this month's peek ahead. We're sure more details will land in your purview next month within the full SharePoint Roadmap Pit Stop July 2021 edition. We've added learn more links per feature, plus a list of important resources in the show notes and in the corresponding blog post on the Microsoft Tech Community published to the SharePoint Community blog. I hope you've enjoyed this Roadmap Pit Stop Time to relax knowing you're all caught up for June. If anything still leaves you scratching your head, open questions or concerns, please send us your thoughts and comments to theintrazone at microsoft.com. We are here to put our and your best change management foot forward. Thank you for taking this step with us month after month after month. Until July, this old sea dog says, stay cool and let the roadmap guide you across the shanty seas. Yo ho ho, yarby matey.